Hello, and in this video, we'll talk about omega-6 fatty acid. In my earlier video, I have talked about omega-3 fatty acids. So if you haven't yet watched that video, the link is given in the i button. So omega-6 fatty acids are type of polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are generally found in vegetable oils, nuts, and seeds. So if we talk about the structure, and if we don't talk about a specific molecule at the first, but there would be multiple unsaturation, right? There would be multiple double bonds in this structure. And that is why these are generally named as polyunsaturated fatty acid. And one class of polyunsaturated fatty acid is omega-6. I'll tell you why they are known as omega-6. But before that, let me tell you that when eaten or taken in a moderation, this omega-6 fatty acid could be also very useful and it could be protective for our heart. And the dose, the amount consumed is the key factor in terms of its physiological outcome. In this video, we would learn about all of these aspects. Let me tell you that omega-3s are such as linolenic acid, Ecosapentanoic acid or docosahexanoic acids are all having one common structure, a saturation in the third carbon or in the omega-3 position. Whereas the omega-6 fatty acids has saturation in the sixth carbon. So omega-3 fatty acids we have previously looked in other videos, so we are not going to discuss much about this. But omega-6 fatty acid has the unsaturation at its sixth position and hence the name is given like that. Two key omega-6 fatty acids are rachidonic acid and linolenic acid. Both of these are omega-6 fatty acids. Now, let us talk about the sources from where we get omega-6 fatty acids. 70% of omega-6 fatty acids are obtained from vegetable oils such as sunflower oil, canola oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, etc. Then 13% of them are from animal sources like several fish, chicken, etc. 10% of them are from trail mix, seeds, etc. And 7% of them comes from dry fruits, nuts, all of these kind of things. So now we have an idea about the plant and the animal sources of omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids, on the other hand, are generally found from fish, seafood, olive oil, etc. And omega-3 fatty acids are very good for heart, reducing inflammation. It is anti-cancerous as well. It helps in preventing joint pains, helps in mood. And also, during pregnancy, omega-3 ensures proper growth of the embryo takes place. So all of these are the good side of omega-3. But what about the omega-6? Is omega-6 bad? Because arachidonic acid, which is an omega-6 fatty acid, is responsible for generating prostaglandins. And as you know, prostaglandins are key inflammatory mediator. So from our description, it looks like that omega-3 fatty acids are the good ones and omega-6 fatty acids are the bad ones. Because omega-3 fatty acids... Omega-6 fatty acids are generally pro-inflammatory and they give rise to inflammation and any other complications. But that's not really true. Omega-6 fatty acids are much better than saturated fatty acid. For example, omega-6 fatty acid, which can be found in sunflower oil, is much better than ghee, which is saturated fatty acid mostly. So, omega-6 fatty acids... Compared to omega-3 fatty acids, there are differences, but omega-6 fatty acids are also healthy. So in this video, what we would learn is the ratio of omega-6 versus omega-3, what matters in our diet. The absolute quantity is not really essential. And this can be understood from evolution. So, 4 million years ago, the primitive men had a diet which was having omega-6 is to omega-3 in 1 is to 1 proportion. But as the time progresses, now we are at a situation where in our diet, generally in the western diet, 
omega 6 is to omega 3 becomes 20 is to 1. So the balance is tipped towards omega 6 and we have we consume a really little omega 3 in our diet, right? So earlier the omega 3 and omega 6 were balanced but now the balance is tipped because now we have more fast foods, right? And this is one typical example. A balanced diet which has more omega 3s than omega 6 is a Mediterranean diet which is rich in salmon steak, salads, all whole grain foods. But in contrast, western diet is something which has more omega 6 compared to omega 3 and that's not really healthy. Both omega 6 and omega 3 are necessary but in an adequate ratio. When this ratio is skewed towards one side, it's not good. But it's still better to have more omega-3 compared to omega-6. And this ratio is really important because if you compare Mediterranean countries such as Spain versus USA, you would see there is a significant increase in deaths which are associated with heart disease. And this can be seen from the data obtained from WHO's website. That is why omega-6 might have aberrant consequences and let's focus on them. So omega-6 in short can create or increase the risk of heart disease, it can evoke inflammation in the body creating a pro-inflammatory state, it can increase the high blood pressure, we would learn, learn how it can elevate blood pressure and other things can also create vasoconstriction. Now let's try to understand all of these physiological phenomena from a molecular perspective. So we know that arachidonic acid is a precursor of prostaglandin and prostaglandin H synthase is the rate limiting enzyme in this process and prostaglandin H synthase is actually augmented by omega-6 fatty acid whereas omega-3 fatty acid prevents the activity of prostaglandin H synthase and thereby omega-3s are anti-inflammatory whereas omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. Now arachidonic acid can further convert it to prostaglandin H2 with the help of cyclooxygenase. From there prostacyclines or thromboxins can be generated based on what type of enzymes they are encountering. Thromboxins, especially, are vasoconstrictors. That means they constrict the blood vessels. And that is why they are hypertensive agents. That explains why in omega-6 rich diet, there is an increased chances of uh, blood pressure. Now, after that, these thromboxins or enhanced omega-6 products can actually increase the risk of heart disease or coronary heart disease. So, arachidonic acid can alternatively transformed into leukotrienes based on the enzyme. So, the enzyme lipoxygenase converts arachidonic acid to leukotriene. Just like uh, thromboxin, leukotrienes are also key mediators of bronchoconstriction or smooth muscle constrictions. So here is a bronchiole and what happens is by the action of leukotriene, the bronchioles get more constricted, right? Which might lead to several respiratory problems and one of the leading cause underlying asthma could be the enhanced activity of leukotrienes. So, our physiological state and physiological problems actually arise due to our diet. Then there are many associated problems if you have elevated leukotrienes in your blood level. Now we can understand why we need a balanced diet. So moral of the story is to take a balanced ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Ideal is to have a 1 is to 1. So your ideal diet which would be very good for your health should be something mimicking the Mediterranean diet. That means 50% of that would have vegetable with vegetables containing vitamins, 
minerals and antioxidants 25 percent of that should be protein which is enriched in um, omega-3 just like salmon steak which would have higher omega-3s to omega-6 ratio and lastly 25 percent of that should have whole grains so these are hypothetical diet plans which can, can, can improve your cardiac health so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you